This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Dr Leanne Hodgson talks about her research on liver fat metabolism. Hello Leanne. Hello Anna. So why does fat accumulate in the liver in some people? Well in health we have a certain amount of fat in our body, we need it. And it's very important that we have it for just normal functioning, for insulation and for energy. And ideally we want that fat to be stored under our skin and adipose tissue. And it seems as we get more obese or put on weight, the fat under our skin doesn't seem to function the way it should. And when we have a fatty meal, such as maybe fish and chips, that fat doesn't get taken up and stored under your skin where we want it to be. It tends to go to other organs. And one of those organs is the liver. And we really don't want fat being stored in the liver. It's not what it's designed to do. The liver is a very metabolically active organ. It sees lots of fatty acids coming in during the day. If you think over the course of a day, you eat three meals, maybe more, and the fat comes in, it mixes in a big pool with fat that's coming from adipose tissue, the fat the liver's making, and then it gets exported out to a new destination. So the liver, in my mind, is sort of like a big central post office in the UK. So you've got all the letters coming in from different destinations, they go into a big sorting pile, and then they go out on new pathways to new destinations. And that's what happens to the fat. Except in some cases, as we know in the postal system in the UK, some letters get left behind in the back room and they start accumulating. There seems to be more and more letters accumulating, particularly around busy times of the year. And that seems to, what happen, to be what happens in the liver is we start eating more fat or we gain more weight. We have more fat coming into our liver, but it's not all going back out through the liver. It seems to be staying there and that's really not healthy. So we define a healthy liver as less than 5% liver fat and that's ideally what we want in people. And when we get over 5%, that's known as fatty liver disease. And how can we measure it? Well, we can measure it um, by a few methods. A very simple method, which isn't very specific, is to actually take a blood sample. And you could have then a high amount of fat floating around your blood. And that would give us an indication that maybe you have some fat accumulating in your liver. But it's not very specific, as I said. So another way of doing it very non-invasively is to give you a MRI scan. And that's basically lying in your, on your back and going into a big magnet and ha lying there for 20 minutes while we take some pictures of your liver. It can be a little bit noisy, but there's no needles involved. And then we take pictures of your liver and look for a specific signal for the fat. And we can quantify how much fat is in your liver. Another way is if you go to your doctor, um, they may send you for an ultrasound. And that's just basically, again, non-invasive, lying on your back, having a probe over your abdomen. And what happens is it's not very sensitive. So if you, you have to have more than 30% fat in your liver, which is a very large amount, for that to be able to pick it up. So the last way we can do it, and it's very invasive, is actually to send you for a liver biopsy. And that's where a doctor will take a small slice of your liver while you're under anaesthetic in surgery, and then put it under a microscope and look at how many fat droplets are in that section. And that's the most invasive way. In research, we tend to use the MRI scanner to quantitate liver fat, partly because it's very quick, but it's also a lot more uh, less invasive. Does this increase the risk of developing diseases like diabetes or heart disease? It does increase the risk of developing these um, metabolic diseases and it's become quite clear in the last few years that as your liver starts accumulating more fat you increase your risk of heart disease, diabetes and these seem to be associated with obesity as well. And the reason we know it increases your risk is as your liver starts getting more fat, it starts producing more fat and sending that out into your blood. And high amounts of blood fat or triglyceride are associated with a higher risk of heart disease. So it's not a good thing to have happen. And what's the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? Well, we've known for a long time, well, the surgeons have known that fat does accumulate in the liver and it's not healthy. But I think one of the more important things we've been able to do is now quantitate it through non-invasive methods, so take you for an MRI scan. More recently, um, we can start looking at the metabolism and how it affects your metabolism through the use of these special labelled atoms, which we call stable isotopes. So we can either put them as part of a meal and feed them to you because they're not radioactive, they're very safe, or we can introduce them into the bloodstream by an intravenous infusion. These particles then go through the liver and come out in the molecules and particles secreted by the liver so we can take some blood samples and see what pathways have been through. And it really gives us a good indication or a metabolic picture of where those nutrients are going in the body and through the liver and then what becomes not so well functioning as you accumulate more liver fat. 
So that's one of our major developments, is really understanding liver metabolism within a human. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, fatty liver disease, I think, is a very silent disease because most people don't get diagnosed. But we do know that one in four middle-aged adults who have had ultrasounds, so that's defining them as greater than 30% fat infiltration in their liver, have fatty liver disease. So that's very high. We also know that people who have type 2 diabetes and who are obese and are middle-aged, 50 to 70% of them have fatty liver disease. So because we're not diagnosing people, there's a very, very large proportion of the population that would have greater than 5% uh, fat in their liver, and we haven't picked them up yet. And also fatty liver is important because it's really just the very start of a spectrum of liver disease that may progress. So the liver fat accumulating in your liver is not healthy. It has metabolic consequences. It may raise your blood fat. But then it can also progress on and affect your liver and make it more inflamed and become very unhealthy. Some cells may die. And you could end up with very serious liver disease. And it has been shown recently that you can go on and get liver cancer. You're more at risk. So it's very, I think, an important area that we can stop the progression of those more nasty diseases of the liver by looking at lowering liver fat in individuals. The other thing that's quite important and is becoming more of a problem is the number of livers that become available for transplant that are good to transplant is far less because the more fat that is in the liver, the less likely they will succeed in a transplant situation. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Well, we need to understand the liver. It's very hard to look at a liver in a human because it's tucked away in your abdomen and we can't always biopsy. So we start by getting some cells from human donors and we can look at specific pathways in those cells. And then we can take our humans and we study them by giving them their stable isotopes and we can merge together the data from the cell model and the human data and really it gives us a good picture of drug targets that we can start looking for. And this may lead to new medications that will help lower liver fat and lower the risk of accumulating liver fat and therefore make everyone a bit healthier. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you.